Hi and welcome! In this video today I have three wildlife photography tips for you. My name is Benjamin Jaworski, photographer and adventurer. Ten years ago I started to teach myself photography. Today I travel the world as a professional photographer and filmmaker. Learn from my experiences, mistakes and tips and join me on my photography adventures. Wildlife photography, same like underwater photography, is a hobby of mine and I want to share with you three tips and it's actually a two-part video. So here are three tips which are more technically and in the other three tips video we have more global wildlife tips. So check out both videos and we start with tip number one. Tip number one is the focal length and there is a saying in the photography world which means something like the longer the lens the better the photograph and in wildlife photography there's something true about it because the longer your lens is the longer the focal length the closer you have an animal on your camera, on the sensor, in the image afterwards. And when you use a camera with a crop factor, like an APS-C camera, it has a crop factor of 1.6, um, you can multiply the focal length by 1.6. So you have the feeling that you're even closer in the image because it is cropped. In most of the situations I use a 300 millimeter lens. I thought about buying a 600 meter, uh, 600 meter, 600 millimeter uh, lens, but it is heavy to carry around, it's big to carry around, it's difficult to fly with it, so I chose a 300 millimeter lens. It has a fixed uh, focal length, it is a 2.8 lens from Sigma. It's not that expensive to buy used and this is my favorite lens. It has a great image quality, it has no image stabilizer which is a disadvantage but it's a nice lens to use. As well for wildlife photography you can use this lens, it's a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. This one here is a 4.0. It has an image stabilizer, you can zoom it and zoom is quite cool when an animal gets closer for example, which in most of the situation does not happen, but with elephants in South Africa, for example, they came very close to the car and when you are then on a fixed lens, I usually change my camera. So in a, in a field situation, I would say, I uh, have two cameras with me and one camera is an APS-C, 300 millimeter, and the other camera is on full frame with a wider lens. So whatever situation I have, I can, um, I can choose the camera and the lens I use, but in most of uh, the situations it's 300 millimeter and even closer. And when you want to get much closer, but don't want to spend so much money for a longer lens, I have a great tip for you. It's tip number three. Tip number two is use a tripod. And why do you need a tripod? I thought it was wildlife photography and not long exposure landscape photography. Well, it's pretty easy because you have a long lens. And maybe you watched my shutter speed basic video where I explained shutter speed. And there I explained as well a rule and I try to say it in English now. Because I have 300 millimeters of shutter speed and I don't want a shaky image that it gets blurry because of my shaking from my hand on the camera, I need at least the shutter speed of my focal length. So I have 300 millimeters here of focal length so that I don't shake in my image I need at least a 300th of a second shutter speed. I always say better double it so 300 millimeter one six hundredth of a second shutter speed. So this is actually the slowest shutter speed I shoot with or I try at least to shoot with uh, when I have this big lens. When I use tip number three, which I will talk later about, um, then I need to have an even faster shutter speed. So when you don't have that much light outside because it's a cloudy day, it is at dusk or at dawn or something, you need high ISO or a slower shutter speed. And when you use a slower shutter speed, it's always a risk that you shake with the camera. I don't have an image stabilizer on this lens, for example, so I just use a tripod. It's very easy. As well, I do filming sometimes, so I just put it on the tripod and this is where this mount here is very good for. Just put it on the tripod, camera on the back and then everything is safe. And sometimes I even just, uh, just use it as a monopod, so I would just do it like this. Get it out, 
then use it as a mono tripod, a mono tripod, mono pot, <laughs> and then put the lens and the camera on top. And then I just use it like this, wildlife photography style. So use a tripod, it's always worth to carry it. And the last tip, tip number three, is something very awesome every wildlife photographer should definitely have uh, with them. It's a converter and I have it here. The, the, this thing here looks like a lens, but it's actually a converter. So what a converter does, it converts a shitty image to a great image. No, what it does, it makes or it gives you a longer focal length. So with this thing on, I don't have just 300 millimeter, I now have 600 millimeter. And this is great, oh my God, 600 millimeter. And it's not that much bigger, great uh, invention. There's a disadvantage with that thing as always, everything has its price. Um, it's not quite expensive, it costs something like 200 euro, um, uh, so it's much cheaper than buying a long lens, but you get double the f-stop with this thing. It's a two times converter, so it means I get twice the focal length I have, but as well twice the aperture I would normally have. So in this case, my open or most open aperture is 2.8, and with the converter on, I get from 300 mm 2.8, to 600 millimeter 5.6. So the most open aperture I can use is 5.6 now. And this is why tripod is important as well, because now I have 600 and I need it, when I use the double shutter speed, I need one two thousandths of a second with my slowest shutter speed. I can go slow, I can go on 600, it's no problem, but then with a tripod to be on the safe side. So, converter, tripod, long focal length, bam, and you're totally into wildlife photography. As already mentioned, this is just the first part of my wildlife photography um, tips series. There's the second part. Um, it will come out next week or when you watch the video later. It is already out, so check the playlist, check out my channel. There will be a second video and the second video is about tips um, which are more global, which are not that technical. So this is the technical base you can use for wildlife photography and the second video is more about the global things. So, so check it out as well. And when you like the video, thumbs up, share it with somebody who's interested interested in photography, especially maybe wildlife photography and we see us next time. Never forget, sag mal einstellen, Digga, haut da rein and when you do wildlife photography, just write a comment and write what tips you maybe have as well. Oh, and when you want to learn Adobe Lightroom the easy and fun way and start edit your photos, check out my full video course at learnfromben.com.